Um, Andrew, over to you. Um, you I mean, yeah, I, I guess some of the issues that Tim has raised are sort of very directly to, to, to the work of your sector and, and, and the BRC, so maybe... Yeah, and just for those of you who don't know, British Retail Consortium, so we represent all of the UK-based supermarkets here that um, many of you here will shop in. Um, and maybe for uh, people from overseas, I think there is one slight difference which is relevant to some of the points I'm going to make, is the UK retail sector is a very high proportion of own brand here, which gives retailers much more um, access to um, change the composition of food that we have here. So when I talk about reformulation, I can talk about it in line with what our own brand um, uh, products are that they end up on the shelf. So I want to uh, talk about three things really today and reflect them. Um, so I've been working with various government departments on behalf of the sector for a number of years um, around obesity policy and public health. So I wanted to reflect a little bit on some of my views on some of the leadership issues which Tim and others have touched upon here where I see things could have could improve and we could learn some lessons from what's happened here. Uh, a quick touch upon kind of policy and how policy works or doesn't work very well in relation to us. And then finally, obviously, talk about the industry and issues from our side in terms of what works well, what doesn't work well. So looking at the leadership thing, I, I would totally agree with the speakers that we've heard before. Um, obesity needs to be treated in a much more serious way than it is at the moment politically. Um, it needs to be seen as a long-term issue that is maybe non-political, so uh, you know you start to get agreement, cross-party support, because what we tend to see is everything is driven by political cycles. So policies will change, so we had a previous government, now we're in the responsibility deal, which is the coalition approach to public health. If Labour win at the next election, no doubt we'll be into another set of policy and another difference. Actually, there should be a much more consistent approach. It should also sit with a much more senior part of government, generally, um, with a senior minister coordinating, and I think uh, previous speakers have spoken on it, that we need to ensure that all parts of government are involved. At the moment, it tends to be siloed within the Department of Health, um, but it has so much relevance to food, agriculture, health, education, right across the piece. And if it was at a serious cabinet-level post and it had that kind of extension across, you would be able to drive a lot of the messages and, and pull a lot more levers than happen at the moment. And I think finally, uh, it is interesting to see, and uh, maybe you know, academics are assessing the value of public information. So currently we have a government that doesn't really drive public and believe in public information. We've had pre previous governments that have. I don't know, as, a, as an industry outsider, what impact they have, but we do have potentially the, the opportunity to assess those over the last four years compared to previous years. And I think finally, I think it was Steve mentioned it, and I'm really glad he did, because one of the challenges that we've certainly pushed back on the responsibility deal and other public health policies is the issue of monitoring the effectiveness. We actually enter a lot of different pledges and agreements with government, but a lot of the time we want to know what's actually working and what's effective, because retailers will say, we'll put our resources in it, but we want to know that it's going to work for our consumers and for public health, there is very, very little evaluation of public health policy that comes back to industry. And that then drives a suspicion that this is just driven by um, kind of political uh, 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 kind of gimmicks is probably too, too strong a word. But basically, there are policy that is driven to grab headlines and to put industry in the newspaper next to government. But actually, is it effective? And that draws me then on to policy. I think our challenge would be there needs to be much more evidence-based policy than we see at the moment. Um, you know, retailers, like everybody else, we, we're, we're serious about obesity, but we want credibility to buy into particularly voluntary initiatives, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And I think it's also really important that the public, who are then our consumers, understand that whatever the policy is based on evidence, because I think they want credibility as well, and they <coughs> want to believe that what they're doing is the right thing. And we do see that, and I, and I would say the area where we probably see the least evidence, which is the area we're seeing the most challenging now, certainly in the UK and Europe, is around behavioural aspects of, so how consumers act within stores or pick up advertising, because it is interesting that some of the work we've seen does not tally with our own evidence of how consumers behave in stores. So it's very important that we get that evidence-based policy. 
and finally on policy it really needs to be comprehensive so you know if we look at the if you look at the responsibility deal pledges that are signed at the moment you will see a lot of retail sign up you'll see some food manufacturers and very little out of home sign up now we have seen in the uk a huge growth of the number of calories that are consumed out of the home and yet the government always tells us that's the hardest sector to engage with yes. And I think that's where we are really missing the trick in the UK. And we have some very good examples of, 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 of out-of-home companies that have engaged, but unfortunately very few of them across the piece. I think there's also been that issue to, to concentrate on headlines, particularly at the end of political cycles, rather than actually looking at long-term issues, and tending to lean on those companies that are prepared to sign and prepared to, to work with the government, rather than being more challenging with those that aren't. And I think finally, I would sort of just push back something we've heard. Actually, I've seen less challenge of personal responsibility in the last four years than I'd seen previously. I think um, the reliance has been on industry maybe to reformulate label and that will be enough. And I think at times we need to challenge ourselves, consumers and citizens more to play their part um, alongside everybody else. So turning to um, industry, first of all, I mean, retailers like everybody else, we're, we're consumer driven. And generally, consumers are interested in health and well-being and want to do the right thing for them and their families. And therefore, it is important to brands. So the point we heard earlier about the growth of brands and retailers abroad, I don't know if it's the same, but if you hear, it's a really important part of the whole trust agenda that retailers have with their consumers. Now, it may not translate into how consumers shop in, in the stores, but they do say they are interested in their families and their families' uh, health and well-being. So there's actually commercial <coughs> aspects to be had in this. And probably the, 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 the clearest way we've seen that is the growth of the healthy ranges. So we talk a lot about ready meals. The healthy ranges, the kind of the healthier alternatives in some ways to that, are now worth billions of pounds. There's huge commercial value in health and well-being if people get it right. But the one thing I think that policymakers and a lot of NGOs get frustrated with is the pace of change of consumers. We're driven by consumers. Unfortunately, consumers don't always want to do what policymakers or NGOs would like them to do. And there's a real frustration. And then that tends to, to end up in a blame game. I think reformulation has been incredibly successful in the UK. Um, you know, there has been a lot of reduction, particularly of salt. But if you look at fats, we're into sugar. Tam's shaking his head, but you've got all the figures in front of you. Well, I'm sure you can yeah. see. Um, and there's more to do, but I think the problem is we have got a little bit into a cycle that reformulation is the answer to obesity. It isn't. And actually, we're going to end up making some of our food completely tasteless or unsafe. So we need to maybe ease away from reformulation and look at things like portion control, labelling, and use of those products in the home as part of a healthy diet. Voluntary... Um, initiatives are very very strong in the UK so we heard about regulation but actually it's kind of pseudo regulation for the retail sector because voluntary initiatives tend to be the government or previously the FSA will announce something that they want to do and then they will use their the levers through the media to encourage companies to sign up those brands that are the most prominent and that media would expect to see them generally the ones that sign up um, and therefore they can be very very effective and actually they can answer some of the things that regulation probably can't deal with. So if I come back to reformulation, that is a really, really difficult area to regulate. And therefore the quickest way and the best way is probably to work with industry on voluntary initiatives. However, voluntary initiatives now aren't enough for some companies because what's happening is some companies are reformulating and some that aren't. We're in a commercial world. So if I give you an example, most of our companies have reformulated all of their pizza ranges now. So they've cut the salts, they've cut some of the fats where they can. Now they are competing for the Saturday night market, X Factor market with takeaway pizza companies. Now very few of those have reformulated any of their products. So, and they taste really nice. You know, I mean, they taste great because that's what it is. But, so our companies would say, well, we've done the right thing. And yeah, we might've got a pat on the back from the Department of Health, but actually we know that consumers are gonna buy the one from the takeaway rather than buy ours. So we're shooting ourselves in the foot. So what companies now are saying is don't think that we don't want regulation because actually regulation is a level playing field for food companies. It's much better for us now and our companies are becoming more resistant to voluntary initiatives and starting to say, well, actually, we'd be better off with regulation because at least when we have to reformulate 
or we have to sell something in some way, so do all of our competitors out of the home as well as in the home. So mm -hmm. I think there's a real discussion. Unfortunately, politicians seem to have the perception that we only want voluntary initiatives, but mm -hmm. actually what we want is everybody to do the right thing and everybody to play their game <laughs> and also not to handicap ourselves in, in the process. And then I think the final thing I would say is, if I had any advice, is if you're going to intervene, then you need to start the discussion with industry as early as possible. So I think back to um, front of pack labelling, which we now we have. So we have all retailers signed up to the Department of Health's front of pack labelling. It's been rolled out in your stores and you'll see it all now. But you'll be aware that some were using the GDA model, some were using the, um, the, the so-called traffic light model for a number of years. But the FSA forgets that those companies that were using the GDA model had actually tested and launched that GDA model before the FSA got round to launching its front of pack label. So they were already working with their consumers on a model that they felt worked, and that's why they didn't switch. So if you want full buy-in, then you've got to get in early to encourage people to buy into the model that you've got, because once they're established and they become part of the general day-to-day -day behavior for consumers, it's very, very difficult to change that. So those are just a few things. Maybe Thank you. Could I ask you about one area that's obviously, you know, that if you look at a lot of the data that Barry has set out, but it is also in Steve's report, this, um, you know, especially in the UK, but in developing countries as well, this rise of obesity amongst young people, you know, from 5 to 11 mm -hmm. in particular. But if you look at a lot of the <coughs> advertising, or some of the advertising from industry, that explicitly targets that age group, and is clearly targeting them for products which have levels of, let's say, sugar content, which are well above NHS mm -hmm. recommended levels for, for children. I mean, is this an area where well, we, we... do have regulation on that in the UK. So we have the Ofcom model, which has now been... So you are not allowed to um, advertise high-fat sugar products at um, times of the day when children would be uh, watching TV or would over-index in terms of watching. So we do have regulation on that. I think what's interesting, obviously, NGOs would like that pushed to 9 o'clock, for example, so it would take your X-factor type um, issue in. But I, uh, we don't tend to advertise high-fat sugar products at that time anyway. But I think what industry would want to see is the evaluation, the effectiveness of the first ban that's been in place now for, what, four or five years, I think, the Ofcom model, to see has that been effective. Because if it has, then that may, might be able to justify looking at an extension. <coughs> but at the moment... I've seen no full evaluation of the effectiveness of the Ofcom model. So we do have that in place in the UK. And that's my point, that there's actually a lot of policy that is <coughs> out there that people are following, but there's not a great deal of evaluation. OK. Thank you. So, look, what, I, what I'd like... So thank, thanks to all of you for those great presentations. What, what I'd like... I mean, there's, there's a huge number of issues that are being thrown out there. So what I would like to do is to throw this open out and take maybe three or four questions, depending on the duration of the questions. Uh, and I would ask people to keep them short, please. So, um, so l uh, either comments on specific points or, or general observations that people want to make. So let, 